Thanks for watching. And today I want to solve the Fresnel integral, but the cool way. And you'll see, it's seriously exciting. Okay. <laughs> and in order to do that, we want to use a Feynman trick. So let i of t be the integral from 0 to infinity of e of minus tx sine of x over x dx. Because as they say in French, pourquoi faire simple si on peut faire compliqué? Why make this complex easy if we can make it complicated? And indeed, weirdly, using this exponential term, we can simplify this integral. Not only that, let's now split up the region from 0 to infinity into smaller intervals. So this becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi of this gibberish e of minus tx sine of x over x dx plus integral from 2 pi to 4 pi of the same thing plus integral from 4 pi to 6 pi of the same thing etc etc so we get this infinite series in fact and those terms let's just label them so i believe this becomes i of zero and this is i of one i of two etc etc and then you can indeed get this infinite series of i n and what we want to do, we now want to study each term individually and see what we get. So here are i m, what are those? So it's an integral, remember 2 pi, 4 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, or in general 2 pi m, of course, and 2 pi m plus 2. I thought 2 pi times m plus 1 over function, so e of minus tx sine of x over x dx. And now you'll see soon why, but instead of studying the function itself, let's study the derivatives. So let's differentiate this with respect to t. So i am prime of t, and again, let's be naughty, put the derivative inside the integral. <laughs> and we get integral from 2 pi m to 2 pi m plus 1. Now, using the chain rule, the derivative of that is e of minus tx times minus x sine of x over x dx. Now the x's cancel out here, and then you have a much nicer integral. So integral from me to me plus 2 pi of minus e of minus tx sine of x dx. And this one is totally doable because again, we don't have an x in the denominator. So literally what you do, you integrate by parts twice and solve for that integral. And then you get the following formula. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> So again, if you find the antiderivative and evaluate it from um, 2 pi m plus 1 and then 2 pi m, then you get the following thing, which I know it's super scary, but it's not that scary because a lot of terms simplify. So cosine of 2 m plus 2 pi, that is 1, you get even multiples of pi, sine of pi m, that is zero. Again, cosine of two pi m, that is one. And finally, sine of two pi m, that is zero. So really, after you know, the dust settles, we do get the following nicer formula. Summa summarum, we end up getting the following. So the derivative of i m is just e of minus two pi m t, times this term, so e of minus 2 pi t minus 1 over 1 plus t squared. And here's a cool thing. So this doesn't depend on m at all. So let's call this a. So this becomes a 
e of minus 2 pi m t. But that's just a e of minus 2 pi t to the m. But then if you call this r, we get that the derivative of those functions is just a r to the m. Wow. So in other words, the derivative of our pieces of the Fresnel function, what do they satisfy? They're just a geometric series. So in fact, if you now sum them up, those derivatives, then you just get sum of a r to the m, and then that's much easier to evaluate. So this m somehow disappears. How cool is that? Again, as Ian Fowler, the uh, recommender of this problem suggests it. It's like the walls of Jericho fall down and then everything becomes much nicer. All right. And therefore, the derivative of our original function, well, again, i was the sum of i m's. So again, let's be naughty again and differentiate under the sum. It's probably a dominated convergence theorem thing. So sum from zero to infinity i m prime t, but we just calculate the derivative. We found, woo, it's a geometric series. So m from zero to infinity of a r to the m. And so this just becomes a times one minus r. Okay. And I think, yeah, the r is between zero and one, so it's not, nothing to worry about. Okay, and now we just need to calculate you know, this, I mean, recall what A is and what R is. So in particular, what we get is this becomes E of minus 2 pi t minus 1 over 1 plus t squared. And here's a cool thing. So another miracle here. So miracle inside a miracle. This also becomes 1 minus e of minus 2 pi t. And guess what? This horrible term just cancels out and we're left with minus 1 over 1 plus t squared. And so the derivative or okay, generalized Fresnel function is just minus 1 over 1 plus t squared. So to end this trauma, we just integrate so once again, what have we found? We found that the derivative is minus 1 over 1 plus t squared. And so finally what we do, we integrate from 0 to infinity. From 0 to infinity, from 0 to infinity, because then what we get, we get i infinity minus i of 0. In this case, it's minus arctangent of infinity plus arctangent of zero. Now, if you remember what i of t is, it's just the integral from zero to infinity e of minus tx sine of x over x dx. But if we let t go to infinity here, Again, dominant convergence gibberish. Uh, this becomes zero. So at least intuitively, i of infinity is zero. i of zero is what we want. The Fresnel integral from zero to infinity sine of x over x dx. Then finally, minus arctangent of infinity. That's minus pi over two. Arctangent of zero is zero. And so we get minus our answer is minus pi over 2. And so with some scribbles, we finally get that our Fresnel integral is indeed pi over 2. Wow! I mean, how cool is that? You really have to appreciate the beauty of the problem. Because what is going on here? We have this function sine of x over x. And then, or I guess the generalized version, if you wish, and then what we did, we kind of split the integral up from 0 to 2 pi, 2 pi to 4 pi, 4 pi to 6 pi. And somehow, what this is saying is that if you always take the difference of the areas, so this minus this, 
and then this minus this, and then this minus this, then even though their differences are not a geometric series, if you take the rate of change of those differences, somehow they get a geometric series, which is again a very surprising feature of this Fresnel integral. And of course, it was recommended by Ian Fowler, so you know it was going to be good. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.